where our body is in space when we go to touch something we start to shake occipital is more visual now this one's not going to be covered as much through tonight but it is part of the brain and an important aspect to remember that can be affected even though it's not a primary temporal lobe auditory for hearing expressed behavior so this can be bipolar memory information retrieval Alzheimer's I know that one's one that a lot of people are here for tonight and it's great to see I want to say this it's great to see everybody from all ages we have from the very young at the very front <laughs> so it's great to see that we're all starting to think that we need to be proactive in our health instead of reactive as our Western society has been very reactive so when we talk about brain imbalances things that can be signs and symptoms that we have precursors for brain imbalance later in our life that's showing up now headaches I know many people suffer from headaches and I'm sure in the back of your head the first thing you're not thinking of is oh I'm predisposed for Alzheimer's or I possibly have a a chance to get depression headaches can be one of those things chronic pain almost always across the board when chronic pain shows up we're looking at 5, 10, 15 year window before we're going to see some sort of brain deficit showing up so these are things that are very important to start working with early definitely exercise definitely lifestyle makes a big difference here the other thing is regional depression or seasonal affective disorder we in Michigan I'm sure at least know one if not more people that have been affected by seasonal affective disorder on average I would say about 90 percent of my patients come in with a vitamin D deficiency about the same for you? Yeah, in fact, um, statistics here in Kent County is 94% of us are deficient by end of winter. Yeah. And the end of winter, maybe far away. We never know. <laughs> so think about last year. Last summer, we didn't have a lot of hot days. We didn't have a lot of sunny days where people would go out and expose their arms and their legs. The way that we get vitamin D mainly is through the sun. And if we don't expose our arms and our legs without sunscreen for up to 20 minutes a day, then we're not getting our maximum dose of vitamin D every day. So our body can build stores for that. So last summer, we already came off a deficient summer of vitamin D. And if we're not taking supplements or eating foods that help to support some of our fat soluble vitamin intake, then we're going to run through the winter with vitamin D deficits. Very important. And I know we're going to talk a little bit about vitamin D. It's not going to be the primary concern this evening. We're going to talk a little bit more about digestive health and uh, cardiovascular disease. But we will touch on some of these as we go through. Fibromyalgia. I know a lot of people have this diagnosis underneath when they deal with hormonal imbalances, digestive complaints. Fibromyalgia tends to go with them. Fibromyalgia can be a disorder that has nutrient deficits. So when we have a deficiency in your nutrient in your gut that's not absorbing all the nutrients that we need, a lot of magnesium, calcium, your fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, that can lead to a diagnosis of fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia later on can lead to other disorders. Eating disorders, that one's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I would have to really explain too much on that. Metabolic syndrome, here's a great one. And I know we are going to hit this one hard tonight, so I won't spend a lot of time on metabolic syndrome. This is also called insulin resistance syndrome X. This one plays a very big role in Alzheimer's. Does have a lot of role to do in your depression, along with bipolar issues. Schizophrenia is another one that seems to have um, a very large tie with metabolic syndrome. They're just now realizing, and Dr. Denbor is definitely going to elaborate more this evening, on how insulin affects the brain differently than it affects our body. So how we think of insulin resistance in our body that we just tend to put on more fat cells, it affects the brain in a completely different manner. So you can't always say, you know, whatever works down here is going to work up here. They are finding new things. Chronic fatigue goes along with fibromyalgia. We tend to see those two tied together. Movement disorders, this is where restless legs comes in. 
Now I know a lot of patients don't think of restless legs as a possible 